Hello to you today. Welcome to Life in Nancy's Kitchen, the show that feeds your soul, fills your belly, and nourishes your life. I'm Nancy, and today we're going to dish out some hope and inspiration. We have two amazing guests here today. I'm Michael Tremble. He was born without arms, and he is going to inspire us and show us how he goes ahead and rides a bicycle. And we have Michael Brown, who created and customized the bicycle for uh, Michael. Hello, I am absolutely thrilled about our next two guests, Michael and Michael here. We are about to go ahead and have a big dose of inspiration and hope today. Michael Tremble here, who was born in Russia. And uh, we have Mike Brown here, who's a Pittsburgh native. So Michael and Michael, I welcome you to Life in Nancy's Kitchen. And uh, welcome. Well, thanks Thank for you. having us. Oh, glad, that, glad you're here. And then we'll go ahead and we'll get a little demo here in a little bit too. So. Let's just start off right here. Let's let everybody know what your story is, Michael Tremble, and then we'll get to Michael, and then we'll just have a conversation. And so tell us about yourself, Michael, and your whole story. Well, my name is Michael, and I was born in uh, Russia. Uh, the reason I don't have any arms is because of the Chernobyl accident. There was recently that uh, nuclear disaster in Japan. Mm -hmm. Well, Chernobyl was like that, but it was a lot worse than the Japanese one. And I was born with arms because of that. My mom was pregnant at the time. And so when I was born, I was put in an orphanage, so I never met my biological parents. And I was in an orphanage until I was about eight, nine years old, and then I was adopted by American parents and came here in uh, 1992. 92. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I stayed with them. Uh, we didn't get along too well, so they put me in two Christian boarding schools. And then after I came back in uh, early 2000, I actually went into CYF. And then I was in the Arborly group home till then when I became independent when I was 18 years old. That's a great program in Pittsburgh, Auberly. I'm very familiar with that. Okay. Yes, I was in all of the programs. I went to first Goal, mm -hmm. then I went to Pact, then I went to Target, then I went back to Goal, then I went to Sill. So I tried out every little program like it was a buffet. Wow. And then from what I understand, you even got your college degree here in Pittsburgh? I did from yeah. Duquesne University in uh, political science. I always tell people I got a BA in BS. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Good one. Good one. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay. And then, so how did you meet Michael Brown? Well, I have a friend. His name is Tim Rhodes and his wife, Julie. Uh, they were at his bike shop getting new bikes. And she was telling him about, you know, I've been looking for trying to get a bike modified. And I've been to so many bike shops, made all these calls, and everyone said I was either a legal liability or what I was asking could not be done. Because mm. I had a specially made bike when I was in the one Christian boarding school in Missouri. And I was able to ride that just fine. So I recently, uh, everyone, you see people riding bikes, and I'm like leading more mobile independence. Mm -hmm. So I really got down this year to getting a bike, and I never realized I would come to so much um, headache to try to get a bike. It was ridiculous. It was, huh? It was ridiculous. I never knew every bike shop had its own legal team. You know, it's uh, like everything. There's a little legal matters are there. Are you in the everywhere. business of selling a bike, or are you in the business of litigating? Mm -hmm. You know, choose one and stick with it. There mm -hmm. you go. There you go. So Mike Brown. And you customize this bicycle for Michael. What mm -hmm. other types of bikes? Because you're unique for customization. So just give us a little bit more about your business and the type of bikes that you customize. Nope. I got connected, like he said, through a bike shop that I was working part time in. And um, actually, I didn't meet Tim and his wife at my machine shop. This was at another location. And they told me about Mike, and I was intrigued to see what you know what was developing with him because. Uh, the way they describe it, he was toned down by everybody. Right, right. And um, I wanted to have Mike over my shop and discuss what we wanted to build for him and what we needed to do to get him biking again. And so then you did with your, your company is called Maestro Bicycles? It's called Maestro Frameworks. It's on the north side of Pittsburgh, and I build custom steel bicycles. And mm -hmm. normally I'm building for bicycles for people that are really short or real tall that mm -hmm. can't get a properly fit bicycle. but. Um, I had some special cases come through my shop before Mike, and then when Mike came along, I had no, 
you know, I just wanted to see what I could do and help. Because so if he wanted a ride, I wanted to get him on a bike. Okay, and this was your very first request for someone to ride a bicycle who did not have the arms to hold the handlebars? Yes. <laughs> yes, this is the very first time. It's pretty, it's pretty unusual when Mike showed up, but I, I saw how... Um, how he got along, the balance is amazing, and what he can do with his feet, and how he was um, capable and really had the desire to bike again. Mm -hmm. And I um, thought about trike, and I thought about this and that, and I knew Mike wanted to ride a traditional bicycle, which he already had mm -hmm. for over a year, I think. Yeah, I was sitting in the um, garage of my landlady. Or was it oh, it was? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, because I got the bike from REI. Okay. Actually, Tim and I picked it up at the store, and we thought we'd just be able to get it, you know, retrofit just like that, you know. So we went to all these bike shops, and they were like, no, 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 you right, know. Right, right. They were afraid something, yeah. you know, dangerous yeah. would happen, and you might turn around and sue them, and they right, didn't really take yeah. that on. By the time he got the bike, actually, all of the wheels were deflated, the right. tires. <laughs> Right. Because they, oh, they were deflated. There. Yeah, oh. they were sitting there that <laughs> oh, long. Oh, it was that long. Yeah. <laughs> you said it was about 12 years since you were riding? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, and you thought you wanted to do that to go ahead and gain some more independence. Right, and yeah. So you could get around so on So I don't have run. to depend on certain people to pick me up, drop me off. You know, mm -hmm. I live in Munhall. Okay. And um, right outside the waterfront in Homestead. Okay. Where there's all those shops, Giant Eagle, the theater. And it's right. only about a mile away. So okay. I figured a mile away isn't that bad if I can go on a bike. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you, when you're riding down there, because that's a very populated area, what about um, people taking extra looks at you, staring, any of that? Well, so Is far... everybody rooting you on, or do you get more ridicule, or how would you say that experience is when people see you? Well, so far, I actually ride it at nighttime, you okay. know, so I get more comfortable, you know, because sure. the, the sidewalks, as you know, are horrendous. Right. The roads are not that much better. Right. So I try to ride on the road as much as possible, and during the nighttime, usually between 10 or 1 a.m., Okay. 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. is when I'm able to ride it a lot better. Because I actually go um, all the way up like, Interborough Road. I don't, have you I don't know on? that exactly. Well, it's no. a pretty steep hill. And okay. again, my bike currently has no gear, so it's all leg power. Right. Y wow. Yeah. So I wow. go up that, and I've gone uh, 10 miles at a time. Wow. Under an hour. 10 miles under an hour. Oh, yeah. That's fabulous. Yeah. I just make several round trips. And so I go from there, then I go back to where the, um, there's a school in Munhall, right by the Munhall uh, High School. Okay. What is Steel Valley? That's what it's called. Okay, Steel mm -hmm. Valley. So again, without having gears, I mean, you must really have some strong oh, legs, yes. don't you now? <laughs> some strong legs. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what you've had to use to, you know, do everything. You know, to eat with, mm -hmm. to, um, you know, whatever. How much? How much independence are there? Where are you restricted? In what type of activities? Well, I mean, I'll never be a basketball player. Yeah. <laughs> I, I accepted that fate a long time ago. Right. Right. You know, so. Um, but no, I mean, I can't, like, I can reach things over my head, but as far as, like, going sh food shopping, you know, okay. if you saw somebody else looking to pick up an apple, you'd be like, wow, that is mm -hmm. really cool. But then if you saw me put the apple back, you'd be like, yeah, I'm not shopping here ever again. Yeah, you know, I so there are that. some hygienic things that, you know, I just physically can't do. Right. So that's why I have to have a friend, like my friend Tim, who helps me food shop. Okay. Um, but other than that, there's really not that many limitations, okay. you know. Well, being that this is a cooking show, mm. you just tell me segue in here to food. We okay. love food. And yes. I understand you like to cook. And I do. You do. Mm. What are some of your specialties? Because I also want to hear about this almond milk you make. Yes, I use a Vitamix. You can actually use any regular blender, okay. but it helps you have a high speed powered uh, mixer like a Vitamix or a Blendtec or a Ninja. Any of them will work. And what I do is I put in a cup of almonds, make sure that you uh, soak them at least eight hours, because if you just uh, blend them in and drink it, it'll pass right through you. Because oh, okay. almonds need to germinate. Oh. So by doing it in water for at least eight hours, that does a trick. Okay. So I put in a cup of almonds, mm -hmm. and then I put in two heaping tablespoons of frozen chocolate chips, one heaping nice. tablespoon of cinnamon, nice. either a fresh or frozen banana, and then I put in eight cups of water, and then I blend it on high for a good 90 seconds, and then I pour it in these uh, BPA water bottles that I have like, like this. Yeah. I have every color water bottle you can possibly imagine. Wow. Yeah, I, I'm kind of crazy about these water bottles. And then I'll just put it in the refrigerator. Okay. 